in the loop. We're here to discuss the ups, downs, and sideways of the sport of figure skating and maybe give you plus five GOE along the way. Let's introduce this week's hosts. Hi, I'm Yogita, and I barely got any sleep this weekend because time zones. My Twitter handle is at Liliorum. Hi, I'm Bex. Um, I'm killed over my leaf, but I don't have to worry about surviving Japanese competitions for a whole nother month. My Twitter handle is Bexta. Hi, I'm Kat, and I cannot believe that the Grand Prix series is over already. Find me on Twitter at CatTweets. Alright, so, the Grand Prix series is over, guys, and we survived, guys. Yeah. <laughs> in my mind, it's not over until Grand Prix Final, but... Well, no, true, but we've gone through the like... really grueling portion of it, and we get a break for a week, which is all that matters. <laughs> I know, it just felt... Oh my god, I just feel, like, so exhausted for some reason, even, like, after all of this. Because you haven't been sleeping! <laughs> we went to two Grand Prix, and then all the next four were not in our time zone. Like, I just realized that, and what were we thinking? <laughs> I know. I, my sleep schedule has been so weird. It, oh my god. This is why I slept through a cup of China. Yeah, that was a smart move. We can't all love ourselves, Yugita. We so, should probably mention that this is our recap of Rustelecom and NHK, the last two Grand Prix before the Grand Prix final, which is coming up in two weeks in Torino. So I guess let's just get started with the pairs. We have our winners of the pairs in Rustelecom. Um, Alexandra Boykova and Dmitry Kozlovsky, Evgenia Tarasova, Vladimir Morozov, um, and Minerva Fabian Hase and Nolan Siegert from Germany. And the winners of um, NHK trophy pairs were, of course, my loves, um, Sui Wenjin and Hansong um, from China. And then Kirsten Moore Towers, Michael Marinaro from Canada got silver. And third place was Anastasia Mishina and Alexander Galiamov from Russia. Uh, Paris, this Grand Prix series is just kind of like a wild, chaotic, unexpected mess. Like, it's just... It's so weird, this entire Grand Prix. Paris is rough. It's like unpredictable in some ways as for the winners, but for everything else, it's just kind of been like a muddled everyone trying to really cement themselves and get like a lead in the general pack i just think that it's always interesting to see which teams end up capitalizing on the momentum and which teams end up faltering because like if we're gonna start getting into it like if we're gonna talk about teams capitalizing boykova and kozlovsky really saw that door open with zabiako and ember out and we're like hello we are here they really capitalized at Rust Telecom and they skated really lights out. Like they were almost foot perfect um, in both programs. They're the only, so far, they're the only team this season besides Swan Han to score over 80 in the short program. And they just in general look so polished and confident in everything. And their two programs also worked so well with them. I, I remember last season, I really, I liked them as skaters, but I wasn't really into them because I didn't like their programs as much. But this season, like, they have the complete package. Last year, okay, I watched them, like, we saw them at Skate Canada, and I was so impressed by their elements and their quality and their lines. But I was like, eh, their program is just, like, very kind of, like, good, bland Russian pairs. It's like Russian. <laughs> very Russian. It's good, but it's not really interesting. But I'm a sucker for, like, a good Bond free skate. Like, I know there's, like, a few issues with being maybe, like, you know, you could, like, argue that the music cuts aren't the best or something. But, like, oh, my God. Like, they execute it so well and get so into it. And they both perform the hell out of it. It's, like, the good kind of drama that, like, really allows them to bring out their personality, right? And, like, I already love, I love the Spectre soundtrack. But, like, in general, I think that this free skate really is, this is really doing it for for them I think it also really highlights all their great elements like all the placements of their jumps Boykova is stunning per usual but like she makes every moment of this program count yeah and I love how enamored everyone is with them they're just like really cute dramatic kids like come on Dima's reaction at the end of their free skate in Russia like on the ice he was just kind of like fist pumping the air and she, she was like 
okay, dude, like, what? Like, she was, like, cringing. I love their dynamic. And then, like, in the in the kiss and cry, he starts, like, standing up and waving to everyone before their scores even come out. And then she's, like, <laughs> pulling him down, like, dude, sit down. Their scores aren't even out. Dude, calm down. <laughs> we, we love that confidence, though. But, yeah, they're so, like, for what a young pair they are, they're so polished and so refined. Like, they perform every moment. And it's just great to see, like, even their growth. Like, they skated well at Skate Canada when we saw them. But here, they just completely, like, brought down the house. It was incredible. <laughs> Yes. And yeah, I'm just really impressed by their grit. There are some elements that like, she definitely fought on some of the throw landings, but still her running edge, keeping her leg up. Her running edge is so beautiful. And even like on the side by side jumps there, I did not think that he was going to be able to complete the combo, like the triple toe, double toe, double toe, because his axis was so off during the triple toe. And he still managed to check those double toes on. So yeah, just so, so impressed by them. And just I think that once we talk about Boykova and Kozlowski and their insane, I don't even know if you would call it rise, like, yes, rise in, like, the standings, but, and, like, in their performance, but, like, definitely, like, just overall perception. I think that now the Russian Federation has fully backed them, because if we go on to a little bit more of a sadder topic of how Tarasov and Morozov did which was really weird that Restved decided to put Boykova and Kozlowski against Tarasov and Morozov in both of their Grand Prix this season. I like, I don't know how smart of a move that was. It wasn't that smart, but the Russian Fed loves to do like they're really passive. Like that's their entire theme this Grand Prix series is right. like, passive aggressive matchups between like the young blood and the old blood, and was like, oh, we'll throw you to the wolves and you can battle it out. Right. And so Tarasov and Morozov definitely were not as much of a hot disaster here as they were at Skate Canada, which was really sad because we saw them skate live there. They didn't abort lifts. I was just happy. Like, they, I actually got to see their lifts this time, and they were beautiful, and they're so hard. <laughs> like, the the balance on those is insane. It's like, they even <laughs> lost in PCS. That's, that's what was really surprising. Yeah, so that having them skate better here and still losing out, like, they honestly performed, like, at, like, a decent, adequate level. Like, it's an, obviously not the best we've ever seen from them, but given how much they've been struggling, I was more just happy that they were standing at the end and, like, looked generally okay. Yeah, I mean, their main issues were just their side-by-side jumps. Right. Um, And a few other a few other small things but they performed pretty well and they executed a lot of the elements with a lot of quality it's just in comparison they didn't perform quite as well and some of their tech isn't quite as strong at the moment it's really heartbreaking for me because honestly I think their free skate is probably my favorite program of theirs and to see that they've been struggling so much did, did we sacrifice like a good program for not as strong elements but they ha- did make the coaching change and they're relearning a lot so I- I'm hoping that this is just a temporary like issues that they're having as they're like relearning and-, and learning how to work with their new coaching team and I'm really hope that like they take these next few weeks to figure something out so they can make a really strong case at Russian nationals for themselves. Yeah, I think that's for some teams missing out on the Grand Prix final is more of a blessing just because you get that extra time to prepare for nationals, which is where matchups and politicking and momentum really become important, I think, especially within domestic rivalries. Especially with Russia, because they have the deepest pair field by far in the world. Exactly. So, like, it might be a little bit of a blessing in disguise, just because, like, I'm sure they're obviously shocked that they didn't even make the Grand Prix final with Zabiako and Ember sitting out, who were probably one of their major domestic rivals last season it'll really be interesting to see but it is really sad and i hope that this is just kind of like a short stumbling block while they're making some transitional moves so but also at cup of russia we had the premiere of xenia stolbova and andre Novzalov. i was really curious to see because it's been a hot minute since we've seen stolbova compete and um I was pretty impressed in their short program. Like, they they had a lot of kinks that needed to be worked out with them, but, like, she is still one of the best pair girls ever. Like, her skating skills are still top-notch. She can still land those throws, and her death spirals look amazing. But, oh, boy, that 
<laughs> that free skate was rough. I like he re he especially Andre you, probably a little strength training <laughs> is needed. Maybe putting two lifts right at the end of the program was not the smartest move for them because they got base value on one and then completely aborted the last one. Like this is still their first outing, so like there's obviously a lot of room to grow and maybe sh you know whip them into shape. I know she can do it. We have faith in her. <laughs> I trust Pears ladies to do anything, so. Shall we talk a little bit about NHK? <laughs> yes. NHK Pears. What do we want to talk about first? Kat, this is your chance. Gush a little bit. Gush Sway about Sway Han. If, if you insist. Um, okay, so Sway and Han, we have a world record in the short program. Woo! It was almost perfect, except for Ellen messing up the spin Poor Alan. <laughs> which they got a level two on but if there's anything that i trust with sway and han it is them nitpicking every single detail and improving it for the next time because like that is what they do so well like in the last competition they got a level down on their on their death spiral and they got like a level three and a b on their spins so then they worked on them their level fours this time well except for in the free skate but that's why our level went down again. I was really impressed by how much more polished this looked versus Cup of China, especially given how sick Wen Jing was. Like, given that she was, like, horrifically ill for a week and couldn't train at all and they still looked this much better, it's incredible how fast they can improve a program. And so that's why I am definitely not so worried as much as on the fluke fall on the triple toe because she said that she was holding back a little bit because her stamina was not up, but she was, like, afraid that she wouldn't be able to make it through the free skate. I have no issues, like, with, with the triple toe. Like, it, it will probably be fine given that it hopefully she'll be injury and um illness free for the next two weeks but like her triple sal guys did we really just see winching land two triple sals in competition in a row like, i know i can't like, believe it my shock especially after the three t issue like oh <laughs> it was just amazing because like yeah obviously anyone who's been watching them from this long knows that this is like her demon jump but like I'm so glad that the Sal is improving and I'm so happy that their pair spin is a level four now too. Like I said, they always pick things to work on and, you know, they always make the improvements that they need to make. So I am not so worried about them. In general, I think that they, this is like the best condition I think I've seen them in in, in a really long time. And, you know, they've always had these struggles with injury. So I'm hoping that they you know, just keep staying healthy and just keep working consistently, not taking any big risks right now. If they maintain the condition that they're at, they should be at the top of the podium, no matter what competition as of now. So moving on, we have a new favorite pair that we've adopted from NHK. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to talk about them. So this is this is me and Dex's time to talk about pairs. Yes, yes, this is where we get to like really go off. But yes, Rika Miura and Yuchi Kihara debuted and... Oh my god, guys. They are so charming. They're so great. I love them. They are so, so cute. Oh my god. They ha they win for kiss and cry reactions, though. Her unbridled joy and the way they just freaked out. Like, they freaked out in the short, but then also when they realized that they got the minimum TES for Worlds. like. But yeah, oh they've literally only been together since, like the summer because Riku and her previous partner Shoya Ichihashi split at the end of July or at least that's when they announced their split so there's no way they've been skating for more than like four or five months so like this is an extremely fast turnaround for them and like their elements look great like the, the twist is the one thing that needs like a little bit more work but like the fact that they can land side by side jump. They landed all their side by sides. I can't believe it. And she has a throw triple left. Their tech potential is really good if they can go with their twist and shape and work a little bit on the complexity of the lifts. Like, ugh. Yeah, and, and honestly just encourages me that like JSF is willing to put forward some funding to allow them to train overseas because they're being trained in Canada by Bruno Marcotte and Megan Duhamel. Um, so that that gives me a little bit more hope that JSF is like, oh, maybe maybe we should actually invest in, in non-singles disciplines. The fact that between like them having such a strong debut at home, which has got to be great for their confidence, but also the fact that the JSF and their new team and they basically have so much potential along with Utashin, like Utane and Shingo in Ice Dance, 
who were also only together for a few months and did so well. Like, this is just so, it's so novel to be excited about non-singles disciplines in Japan. I know. I know. But it's so great. <laughs> like, this is what we've been, like, hoping for for years because Japan has so many talented skaters and then they just don't develop their other disciplines. So, yes. I'm also just really happy they had such a great debut at NHK. We all, we all know, like, Japan, when Japan hosts the competition, people show up. And, like, even for Paris, like, the, the audience was pretty packed. So, like, people got to see them. They got to know them. So I'm hoping that they'll get a lot of Japanese support. And also they'll be able to encourage, like, other skaters that, like, hey, these other disciplines exist, too. That's not just singles. I really hope that this is, like, the start of just overall seeing a little bit more interest and coverage in their non-singles. Um, because Japan is filled to the brim with talented skaters. And to see them all just, like, you know, bottlenecking in the singles is just, like, there's so much, I feel like there's so much wasted talent, wasted potential. So many amazing skaters with great skating skills just doing, like, singles when you could be putting those skating skills to work in dance. It's really, really promising. I just, I just really hope they stay together because <laughs> pairs and Japanese pairs, do you know, but they seem like they have a really good relationship. Like, they look so solid and in sync for only having just gotten together. And they look yeah. so happy together. But Riku is also a Swan Han stan and so she is a girl after my heart and she has good role models and she knows what good pair skating looks like so if she's aspiring to that level then I have like a lot of faith in her motivation and in like their ability to grow and also with that short bob cut like like she looks like a baby wenching just like when she fly when she's just skating around the rink with her little bob flying it's literally the exact same hairstyle i'm so i'm so so charmed really really excited to see them at you know four continents and at world so fingers crossed can't wait to see what their improvement looks like in another couple months all right and now we should move on to looking to the grand prix final (laughs) oh boy we have qualified with 30 points um wen jing sui and song han from china Alexandra Boykova and Dmitry Kovlovsky from Russia with also 30 points. Chen Peng and Yang Jin from China with 28 points. Anastasia Mishina and Alexander Galiamov with 26 points. Christian Moore Towers and Michael Marina from Canada with 26 points. And Daria Pavlochenko and Denis Kodikin with 26 points. This is a very, very interesting field considering the only pairs that are returning from last year's Grand Prix final are... Peng and Jin and Pavlyuchenko and Kodikin. And, you know, the front runners for this Grand Prix final are very, very different from last year's as well. I think that no one is shocked that Sui and Han are the favorites to win. Yeah, they've been to the Grand Prix final three times prior, but they still have yet to win their first gold. So <laughs> please let me have this. <laughs> May this be the year that they actually win. <laughs> I, I would be like shocked if they didn't like honestly I have literally no doubts that they will pull this off well we'll see because Boykov and Kozlowski are the only team right now that are, have comparable scores and they have been consistent like I think that their consistency is what's giving them their momentum this season so far because they have looked really solid and they have great programs and so their scoring potential is pretty high I will say that since their second Grand Prix was in Russia there is definitely the chance that their scores were a bit inflated so we'll see if that they're able to make comparable scores with similar skates like Grand Prix final yeah it'll, it'll definitely be interesting but basically in terms of who could do bronze like it's definitely between both of these teams for gold and silver but in terms of bronze it's literally like shrug emoji here's everybody else <laughs> any of these teams could do it they all have really comparable scoring potential they've most of them have been really consistent so yeah i mean obviously we weren't expecting tarasova morozov not making it so that was that was a shock and that's also probably what's kind of putting more of the results up in the air too because they'd be fighting for gold it'll be interesting to see to how all the different russian teams pair off i think mishim and galimov you know they have the advantage they've beat um, Pavlyuchenko and Kodakin before. They definitely have an edge because of their tech, because they're very, very consistent. And they have that amazing triple sal oiler, triple sal that has looked incredible. 
So it's just a matter of how everyone performs on the day, honestly. Which is a lot of the field here. <laughs> I am very interested to see how Pung and Jin do. Like, in my heart, like, I would love for them to get bronze because they were silver, like a surprise silver medalist last year. But their side-by-side -side jumps are always a huge question mark. Um, and I have no idea what is hap was going on with her ankle. Like, I have not heard any updates about it since Cup of China. Like, they looked okay at Cup of China, it didn't seem like she, her injury was too aggravated if it's still bothering her. So, you know, it, I'm just curious to see because now they've had like three to four weeks to prepare for Grand Prix Final. They've known that they were going to Grand Prix Final for a while, so. Yeah, other than like Pablo Tenko and Kodakan, they've had the most time in between their Grand Prix than anyone before Grand Prix Final. So hopefully in better shape and have had a little more time to really work on matters because they were set back a lot by her ankle injury. But we'll see. It's, it's pretty much just dependent on whoever performs best because as long as you're clean and you really perform the hell out of and fight for it, basically anyone could get it i think that like kirsten and michael like getting second at both of their grand prix i don't even know if they were expecting that to be honest like they actually had some pretty tough fields to go up against and they did pretty well and with identical total scores which is freaking hilarious literally what kind yeah. of witchcraft if you look at the scores too like if they stacked up against most of these like those are consistent of scores to potentially beat people so it'll be really hilarious if they get that same score also grand prix final that, that's just their official score for the season we accept nothing else <laughs> <laughs> On to the men. <laughs> well, at Rostelecom, we had Alexander Samarin in gold, Dmitry Aliyev, also of Russia, with silver, and Makar Ignatov, also of Russia, in bronze. At NHK Trophy, we had Yuzu Ruhanyu in gold, Kevin Amos of France in silver, and Roman Sadovsky of Canada in bronze. Chaos reigns supreme in the men this season. Well, this chaos is just reigning supreme everywhere. Seriously, the, the sheer amount of like medalists in each event who did very well who are not making the final. Although Boyang did sneak in, so good for him. That is probably the most wild development, I think, of the the season is Boyang suddenly sneaking in. <laughs> yes, but we'll get to that later. But like, seriously, like, it's because the field right now is just so clearly like Yuzu and Nathan. And then everybody else. <laughs> battling it out and having like nervy meltdowns and then like someone doing like really unexpectedly well. Although I'm going to be honest, if I had to pick between the field being chaos or Yuzu being chaos, I would definitely pick the field. <laughs> like, I think I've had enough Yuzu chaos. Like Yeah, the fact that Yuzu is like a chill, predictable one other than some like unexpected, you know, last minute layout changes. It's good. It's good. I'll take it. It's always good to have like a level of unexpectedness. I really like it because it's made men really exciting this year because you really have no idea what's going to happen. At the same time, I kind of miss when we had like, you know... Men who could land jumps consistently. I miss last year's Grand Prix Final when it was not like who's going to get bronze or who's going to get silver, but it was literally like, you know, who's going to win because we have no idea. So it's, but you know, this is good potential because if they keep, if, if there's so much competition at the lower levels, like it'll really push everyone to improve. So it's good. We're just in kind of a weird limbo where there's just a big gap between pots of the field and the rest, but it's still really exciting. Yeah, pretty large gap there. All right. So I think one thing that was really fun about these events is we had su utterly surprise bronze medalists with Roman and Maka just coming out of nowhere and taking their opportunity. So I was on vacation when Russian test dates happened. And so I remember when I sneaked into the chat during my vacation and seeing everyone yell about this Russian test dates boy, um, I had no idea who this person was. Until I watched Rostelecom. Yeah, because I vaguely remember him from, like, prior, you know, from, like, juniors. But then he was off for, like, a season just because of injury. So the fact that he came back this strong and was just showed up is... I, I always love to see someone just really take, like, a window of opportunity and just absolutely go for it and be like, listen, I'm here. Because if there's anything, like... <laughs> 
the men's field is chaos right now for sure but none more so than the russian <laughs> men right now oh russian men like it's chaotic but they've been like last year was really depressing right because no one was doing well no one dima was injured misha was injured i mean misha isn't hasn't really skated this year but at least he's taking steps to fix that now um and recovering from a surgery. And Samrin was inconsistent. You know, Maxim, like, Clifton won nationals and then had to retire because he was so injured. Like, it was just really depressing. So, like, granted, you know, I have issues with some of the Russian scoring and inflation and politicking, but it is nice to see the general, like, competition in the field rising really well and, like, It's a lot more interesting. It was very interesting watching Makar because, like, again, this was more or less my first impression of watching him. And I got a lot of Steven Gogolev vibes, basically, from him. It's (laughs) just, like, he is a real jumping machine. They're, like, they're not, they're not the best like technique wise but he can get them done he's he's really he's solid he's really solid yeah he rotates really quickly in the air which i think helps him a lot i i gotta say like for a first impression i remember being like whoa <laughs> but definitely could use a lot more work in terms of like the programs and like the skating overall skating but i'm i'm interested to see how he'll play in though like his scoring at nhk of course he unfortunately didn't skate nearly as well at nhk but his scoring at nhk made a lot more sense sense his 80 pcs in the free versus like 72 ish at nhk remember when he was leading the short program for so long at rust telecom <laughs> oh my god that was so bizarre <laughs> i remember waking up to like go check in on men's for rust telecom and i was like who is this person who's been leading the shorts since like a group ago yeah. but it's it's always it's always really great to see someone have like a really strong senior debut at home like that that i'm all here for and i think he was definitely given that he was skating back to back um at nhk and he probably had it in his mind now like oh my god i could have a chance of making the final it is a possibility it got into his head a little bit which is totally understandable so i don't really fault him for that but You know, I think it's a pretty, for him, he should be really, really proud of how well he did this season so far. Let's talk about the other surprise bronze medalist. Yay, Roman! Yay, Roman! (laughs) I might not like Roman's programs, but I really enjoy watching him skate. Yeah, he's like a really pleasant skater to watch. Like, he has really nice skills and basics. Yeah, he has great, like, ice coverage, really nice skating skills, and he has, like, the best spins. Oh, his spins are so great. And honestly, like, when he lands his jumps, like, they look really nice and solid, and he gets nice full out of them, so... He does. He really does. He gets really into it when the jumps go well. Like, you know, like, it's always nice to see the program open up. And we haven't seen him skate this well in a really long time. I think the last time was maybe, like, Autumn Classic last season? I'm I'm really excited for him because like Canadian Nationals doesn't isn't super deep, but like him versus Nam versus Keegan will be really interesting to watch there. Yeah, I mean, given that they only have one spot for men at a home world, it's going to be like both. All, honestly, all the Canadian men, Keegan didn't quite perform as well as potentially could have. But I mean, I have faith that like by nationals, Keegan could show up and skate Sculler because he's he's capable of really great skating. So Canadian nationals is going to be pretty exciting because the Canadian men have done like quite, quite well this series so far. Even Nam, like Nam did not, you know, podium at Rustelecom like we had maybe thought he might be able to, but he still skated really well. He was still really solid, and he really performed, so I'm excited to see what Canadian Nationals look like, and hopefully they can all just put their best skates forward. Some other highlight from Rostelecom. Man, Shoma. God, like, Shoma at IDF was was heartbreaking, and he really needed those two weeks with Stefan. This clearly is not the best that he has ever done and nowhere lives up to his actual potential, but it's far and away like so much of an improvement over what he put out in France. Uh, it's not what the skate he wanted, but I'm, I'm happy he was able to like see that like he can still like perform or i just hope that this inspires a like permanent movement or at least like a wake-up call that he needs from his comments like post 
Ross Stoicom, he seemed to really indicate that, yeah, he really understood, like, the importance. Like, it clearly made such a difference with him to just have some sort of more present coach for even just the two weeks that it, it he seems really decisive that oh yeah like I can't sit out the rest of the season coachless and I'm going to have to make a choice and it sounds like Stefan will be with him at nationals yeah he's going to be training with Stefan until nationals and then afterwards I think they're going to make a decision of whether Shoma's going to stick with him for the long term at least it seems very very clear to Shoma that he can't keep up this situation and it was really bad for him so hopefully he can get on track later um I'm a little worried just because you know Sota and KG even although we had a rough outing at Cup of China and even like Yuma Kagiyama like yeah looking at the juniors have been doing great so like luckily Japan has three spots for world so it's it's not really a bloodbath like it was, you know, back seven years ago. But it is interesting to see the field open up a little bit in the Japanese men. I'm excited because it used to be that Japan was like, well, was like Japanese nationals were super predictable. So hopefully he can get it together. I'm worried about his jumps. It seems a little bit mental and a little bit a combination of just kind of sloppiness and lack of proper training. I miss when Shoma was up in the equation with Yuzu and Nathan and like neck and neck versus like the fact that now like his scores have been so tragic. That was just last season, Bex. There's still, you know, four months before World, so hopefully I mean Stefan wouldn't be my pick for a coach in terms of jumps. I was just gonna say. <laughs> I think Stefan's gonna be a great coach to have just for like the mental aptitude, which I think Shoma needs. Yeah, it, fingers crossed things work out in the trial and things will be better moving on. So we have Dima, who is still living this season. Bless. It's great not to be injured. Um, I love a non injured Dima. He's doing so much better. I was real worried about him after last season. He's remembering his axles, also really important. Yes, there are there are axles present. Um, his jump math is still off. He needs to go to like the Yuzuru Hanyu school of YOLO layouts. I just need Yuzu to like hold a training seminar at everyone at Grand Prix. Not that he should or have the time, but like seriously, if he could just give a quick PowerPoint about how to quickly calculate jump layouts. Maybe at the maybe at the banquet, like after it's over, he could like put together this presentation. But yeah, I was just really happy for him that he he made the podium and he is able to make the Grand Prix final this time around. So and he looked so much better, too, than at Skate America. Skate America, he kind of had a rough skate. I mean, in my opinion, like, I don't think he was low-balled on PCS, per se, but I think in comparison to Samarin, who beat him on PCS, I would say he was low-balled in contrast. Or yeah. I think his PCS are, like, roughly where they should be. It's just Samarin's were, like, you know, in easy five to seven points higher than I would put them at. So, yeah. Anyway... Great, really excited to see him in the final, so yay! He survived. <laughs> a quick shout out to Dennis for like skating a backup short program in Russia. He did well. I mean, it was really nice. Like, Dennis, you know, he's still a little frustrating in that his jumps are really not quite where one would hope. But like, he performs so well. His performance skills, his, his spins are incredible incredible so yeah it was just great to see him have like you know he's had two pretty like compared to last season his grand prix have been much more solid and he's placed really well his his i love cheese comment was like the funniest thing in the entire rostelecom true highlight hilarious he got a rat plushie and was just i love cheese and stefan hates cheese so it's even better like knowing that background <laughs> We love, we love cheeky students. <laughs> Moving on to men at NHK, let's talk about the one and only user Hanyu. He survived! He survived two competitions, injury-free! Literally, I have spent the last two Grand Prix Yuzu has been assigned to almost like sobbing in bed in a dull haze because he was so injured. 
at each one. Three years. <laughs> Guys, he, like, I think literally the entire mood, including, like, Yuzo and all his team, were just all so relieved that he's healthy and going to the Grand Prix final. I was so happy that he was just in such good spirits, but, like, it was really, like, humanizing just to see how nervous he was here. When he took his opening pose... He was trembling for origin. He was trembling so badly and my heart just dropped. I, I saw he was trembling. I was like, I've never seen Hanyu be nervous like this. Well, I've seen him be nervous, but I've never seen him like he almost was skittering across the ice out of his opening pose because he was shaking so hard. And for him to still do so well under so much, like with that kind of stress, uh, with that kind of pressure and anxiety. And, like, we all know, like, we love Yuzu, but he is so superstitious, so... Yeah. <laughs> like, to confront these, like, this has really been the year where he has just been facing each demon head on and ripping it to shreds. <laughs> and he's been triumphing. It's, like, it's been amazing to just watch him do this. He was so happy to be, to just, like, be going to the grand prix final like it's been so long and my lizard brain is still like worried about his training into the grand prix final or something dumb like that but like honestly like oh. yeah no like hearing him in the gr in the in the kiss and cry with brian and just lane he's like going to the final like he was so excited it really feels like so long since we've seen him at the grand prix final like the fact that he managed to make it through the grand prix intact two working ankles without any like illnesses and it's and it's probably his best shape that he's been in for a while nhk was not quite like origin was not quite as good as skate canna but given the nerves and all the pressure he was under like he did amazingly yeah and we definitely need to talk about like how quickly like we talked about how nervous he was like all of us were but the fact that he was able to like improvise his layout like let's talk about this a little bit he popped his planned second um, quad toe oiler triple flip into a double and then improvised a quad toe triple toe instead of his triple axle triple toe and then YOLO'd a triple axle oiler triple style. Like, what even? Like, on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> that is insane. Also, that triple axle oiler triple salcow is probably was probably his best axle combo that he's done all season, and I'm so blown away. Judge for giving it a zero goe. Like, hello. <laughs> like, I was just, I was absolutely like on the floor over that. Hopefully, in the next few weeks, we can see like. So far, the quad loop is the jump that seems to be like the least stable of the ones that he's putting out so far. We've seen a steady improvement across like his three competitions. So far, it's a little fickle, but it's looking better than it was early in the season. So, and then Kevin Amos made the Grand Prix final. I'm so happy for him. Also, like the, the panning away in from the Chris and Cry right as he realized he made Grand Prix final. I know, that was so, so bad. I was like, go back! I was like, I need that reaction because, like, he was just in such shock. Oh, his short program, like, he skated it really well here. The, his free was kind of rough and, like, he really had to fight for everything and the landings and axis of his jumps still terrify me, but, like, I am so impressed that he just does not sacrifice the program or the choreography or the transitions at all. Like, even if it would make probably his consistency much higher. I'm so happy for him, though. It'll be so great to watch him at the final because he really deserves to be there. And and he, he's commented that Grand Prix Final wasn't even one of his goals for this season, so the fact that he made it is so mind-blowing for him. And then we finally got to see Sota! Sota! Sota Yamamoto! I'm never not going to be bitter because he really deserved two Grand Prix, <laughs> especially in like this field, especially given how much potential there was for like doing well given how well he's done but um it was great to see him finally i mean we saw him at us classic but to see him in a grand prix and at home skating with his idol too yuzu so he, he didn't need to take as much inspiration from yuzu this comp though um like the quad toe pops he's usually much more solid on them but i can understand being nervous here yeah i think it was just like i think the nerves got to him yeah in general though like i really love his like range of motion like his upper body movements 
um, especially during his choreo sequence and his step sequence. Like he is so fast. Um, he gets such great ice coverage. I could use a little bit more facial expression. It's a very, it's a very similar to the problem I have with June, but like he's so young that he can work on it. And I'm just like, I'm just so super happy that he was able to perform here and do pretty solidly. Yeah, I'm really excited to see, as we've talked about men at Japanese Nationals, because it's going to be a time. It's good. Yeah, it, it'll be really interesting to see how it does. And I'm never not like, Soto is still, in my opinion, one of the most inspiring like skaters in the men's fields in terms of just like his pure grit and commitment to like chasing his goals and dreams and getting better seeing him slowly get back like his triple axel and then his quads it's just been like incredible to watch and on to the grand prix final our qualifiers are um yuzura hanyu from japan with 30 points Nathan Chen from the U.S. with 30 points, Alexander Samarin from Russia with 28 points, Dimitri Eliev also from Russia with 24 points, Kevin Amos from France with 24 points, and Boyang Jin from China with 20 points. Sneaking his way in. Oh, Boyang, he made it. I want to just, like, his hilarious post on social media where he was just like, oh, should I, like, film a vlog this week or something? And he's like, all right, no, I'm not doing it once he gets this, once he finds out he's going to Grand Prix Final. And then someone from, like, the official Cup of China account was just like, go get your visa. Oh, yeah, his his visa woes are unmatched. So hopefully this goes better. And he's got about two weeks, so... Hopefully, hopefully this is not another um, visa tragedy. But in terms of matchups, it's basically Yuzu versus Nathan for first and second. Like there's no con unless like Nathan or Yuzu gets horribly ill in the next two weeks. It's just it's them. Considering the margins that they've both won their Grand Prix, <laughs> they've both been beating like their fields by between forty to sixty points. Like they're, they're, it's ridiculous. Yuzu is still the only man to have broken three hundred points, so that is definitely hefty. But also, both Yuzu and Nathan can change their jump layouts to be even considerably harder if they want to, um, depending on probably what the other one does. Like, I'm pretty much convinced Yuzu is going to show up to Torino, like, do his weird taste the ice rituals, and then decide what his jump layouts are. I, I actually disagree. I, I think Yuzu is going to, like, stick to his the program that we've seen him do these past two comps, and will actually try a new layout at Nationals. But at this, I feel like Nathan definitely is a lot more finicky about what he brings to each competition like Yuzu, Yuzu has basically brought the same layout to his competitions and uh, Nathan I feel like changes it up a little bit very much changes his layout on the fly so it's it's gonna be really interesting to see I'm really glad that they both see I well we haven't seen Nathan in quite some time yet but hopefully I mean he's doing well so it'll be really I'll, I'll be really happy to see how they face off against each other it's been a while since they've competed against each other with both being healthy so and then we have just this complete like <laughs> what for bronze <laughs> what's gonna happen with the bronze what's going, it's so like i love that this is so exciting but also what is going to happen any of these men can make bronze any of these men can make the case to be bronze at this competition and it's both amazing but also like what is going on with the men <laughs> nathan is the only returning from last year's Grand Prix final and user yes technically did qualify but then withdrew but the field in is completely different from last year's so it it's just it, it's a wild ride <laughs> for that third spot it's going to be interesting and none of these men have a particular reputation for being like incredibly consistent especially this time of the year like Boyan gets more and more consistent so he might be able to together yes i'm very happy that boyang is a peak later in the season kind of guy and samarin has some of the highest tech ceiling in terms of and he also gets very generous pcs and goe but i'm interested to see how that's going to look outside of russia russia still goes very hard in the politicking but it might be more reasonable i'm, I'm very interested to see samarin versus dima line up here judging from our stellicon it's looking like rustbed is backing samarin and we know that rustbed is looking for a top guy so i will be very interested to see like how an uninjured dima and his like 
third competition out will like do because he has been improving steadily throughout his competitions this season yeah it'll be interesting and like even like Kevin if Kevin skates really well and everyone else like dies on their quads like Kevin is not the most consistent skater with his jumps but even he could have a pretty good showing. I'm not really necessarily hoping him for him to medal, but men have been so just unpredictable this year, apart from like the top one or two men that I- I'm not like making any sound predictions in any way. I'm just really happy we have such an exciting field with a lot of people who like haven't been to the final or haven't been to the final for a while. So for the Ice Sons podiums at Rastawakam, we have taking gold Victoria Sinitsina and Nikita Katalovov of Russia. In silver, Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier of Canada. And in bronze, Sarah Hurtado and Kirill Kalyavin of Spain. At NHK Trophy, we have Gabrielle Papadakis and Guillaume Cizeron from France in gold. Alexandra Stepanova and Yvonne Buchan from Russia in Silva, and Charlene Guinard and Marco Fabri from Italy taking the bronze. So where shall we start? <laughs> I mean, Ice Dance remains the most predictable in some ways, but also this has still been perhaps not necessarily for medalists, but overall a little more unpredictable or a little more interesting in terms of some of the progressions we've seen with certain teams and how other teams have struggled. I think it's that, well, the the field looked so different last year because there were so many teams missing. And so a lot of teams were able to kind of capitalize and you know push up through the gaps a little bit and now that top teams are back it's much harder understandably for there to be shifting of ranking I guess in ice dance just because there's in like there's so much embedded politicking in with the scores and it's just in general ice dancers don't mess up nearly as much yeah so speaking of our world record holders who got new world records at NHK Papadakis and Cizeron it's interesting because they got such astronomic scores but their programs definitely have room to grow Papadakis and Cizeron of the top teams currently or at the teams that are at the grand prix final have the best program even if some of their programs aren't like necessarily for me or it's not like my favorite of them. Like I absolutely love their rhythm dance, but I feel like some of the top teams this season have really been slacking on their, on their program. So comparatively, I'm like, I'll take it. No, I I will totally like, honestly, they're still such incredible skaters and their, their programs are really good. Like, and they, people hop on them. A lot, but, like, the rhythm dance is, like, what I wanted from this theme. Like, it's so campy. It's so fun. Yeah, they need to work on the timing a bit. This program is what I feel like they're more like in real life, you know? They have really fantastic personalities, and I love that they finally, like, took the dare to, like, do a rhythm dance that, like, really shows it. And so many teams this year for the rhythm dance just... They kind of phoned it in or they did like some really kind of antiquated, like, you know, vintage sort of bland thing. And Papadakis and Cizeron just delivered. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I love this rhythm dance like a lot. <laughs> like I was super excited when I when I first heard that they were doing fame. But like that being said. Yeah, that being said, there were some interesting things that went on here. That does not mean we are going to overlook some of the scoring in the rhythm dance. This was the first rhythm dance, over 90 points, but wow, there are some things that we got to talk about. The Twizzles, first, are probably the most egregious. Guillaume literally missed a rotation in the first set, and still the lowest DOE on their entire protocol was the three that a couple judges gave them on the Twizzles. I think what was even more egregious for me is that when they did their fin step, they got only two of the key points, but then afterwards, it went up to them getting all four key points after it was reevaluated by the tech panel. And I was just like, no, you guys missed timing and a bunch of other things. You guys should have gone in a level two there. And their stationary lift also went from level three during the program to a level four by the time I checked the protocols and with all fours and five DOE by the end. So it's like, hmm, 
Mm. It's just frustrating because they're so good that they like, yeah, they need to work on like the pattern and they need to work on some of their elements, but like they don't need that kind of bump to win by a margin. Again, it's just frustrating sometimes because it's like we we do care about like their their scoring and how crazy inflated their scores are but like it's just sad that like a lot of the discussion of how great this program and how how it kind of brings out their fun side kind of gets lost because everyone's so mad about the scores all the time i appreciate papa Doc and cicero like i I'm sure most people know I'm not like their biggest fan, but I agree that they're the top skaters in their field and they don't need the judges to do this. They'd still win these competitions. Yeah, it just makes people frustrated and bitter, which is really unfortunate because like, God, they have such good programs this year. And I mean, okay, so if we want to talk about the free dance, which is definitely a much more polarizing program, I will defend this program to the depth (laughs) because... I am the sort of person who spends all my spare income on, like, going to, like, really, like, eccentric, bizarre, like, minimalistic, modern dance things, and, okay, the fact that they, one, took the challenge of skating to spoken word poetry that is really hard to work with and they worked really hard on doing interesting lifts like this program is just so raw and minimalistic and beautiful and different there are things that i appreciate about them even if the program itself is not really to my taste i guess i get frustrated with because as someone who likes like modern dance a lot to me this is an extremely different program than the ones they've done in prior years like in terms of what the challenging and in terms of how hard this sort of cut is to skate to and from everyone I've talked to like it has a much stronger impact live too which so I'm really excited to see what it's like at Worlds if it already gives me chills I don't know I think they get like a lot of people are like oh my god it's voiceover and people are so like anti voiceovers from last year but okay there's like an abrupt jarring voiceover the way Hubble and Donahue like chuck one in their program and then this this is not I would not classify this as a voiceover it's literally the core thread of their entire program like it's not a jarring interruption. It's literally what their program is entirely built on. So I don't get that disconnect from being like, oh my God, someone's talking because it's such a salient thread running throughout the entire program that it draws you into their world. Moving on to other people got to the final. We have Piper and Paul who finally qualified. Oh, it's been a hot minute for them too. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so happy that they made it, but please work on your fin step levels. Yes, and they've done the fin step before. Like they're an older team. Like some of these teams like Fair and Gibson have not been competing long enough to had to do the fin step before. Like I feel like every single year we do this where right before the final, we just stare sadly at protocols and are like, drill your pattern, drill your pattern, drill your pattern. And then- this is not like the Tango Romantica, which is like notoriously one of the most difficult with two sections. But you know what? They made it through both the Grand Prix without any like heartbreaking because they, they tend to be a little shaky sometimes on the Grand Prix. It was just really great to see them and their scores have been they've been competing really solidly. They've been really strong technically. Great for them to, to get in after just barely missing out last season and this season is also much more competitive so kudos. Yeah, congratulations. So another team that we are very fond of, um, Gwynad and Fabri. Fond of, but a little sad about. A little, yeah. This was this was kind of a hard competition to watch because there were kind of two issues. One was that they last minute changed their rhythm dance to Greece. Their previous rhythm dance was great. I don't understand why they change it, especially like if you had to change it, fine. Why would you do it at a, your Grand Prix event? Why not wait until that? Yeah, change it between, like, Grand Prix Final to Europeans or something. Like, then you have a lot of time. Like, this timing was so weird to me. Like, IDF was just two weeks ago. You did not have time to, go, like, make a new program and have it, like, perfected for your second Grand Prix event in a span of two weeks. Yeah, it just looks, like, very, very rough right now. 
Which is understandable if they basically only had two weeks to drill it. The problem with ice dance is like, okay, if singles, yeah, you can sometimes just kind of copy your layer and yeah, it's hard to change a program, but like ice dance, you have to be perfect. And also, especially considering they're very much a technical team. I mean, they're amazing, but like the reason why they've done so well is because they're such great skaters and rhythm dance is very much how good are you as a skater. Um, and so the rhythm dance is what is their strength and, you know, kind of messing with that definitely wasn't like a, a smart move for them, at least from my perspective. No, not at all. And also, like, the fact that they did Grease, like, Smart Diaz have such an incredible Grease program and it's just going to invite, like, really harsh comparisons just on the whole performance side because you might be the best technician, but still also they struggled a bit like they had a deduction because of a technical fall and they're free which was really unusual for them i mean his like he's recovering from injuries so i'm still just like shocked that they're doing so well but this was definitely the lowest free dance score they've gotten in a while they usually score up in the 120s yeah and they look they look shocked by it they were behind fear and gibson in the free dance which is insane normally given their technical level like the technical gap between these two teams they unfortunately won't be making it to grand prix final but hopefully they will take this time between now and nats and euros to figure out what exactly they're doing with their programs and hopefully marco's hands will heal so they'll be like actually at full strength once europeans happen all right cat it's time to talk about the loves of our life time to talk about stepan van buken yeah it was actually nhk was really fun because there were a lot of teams from skate america and we all got to see these teams like you know five weeks ago in person so seeing their improvement was really fun especially because these guys had the most time to fix up any issues from like from skate america until now because they got the first and the last grand prix um they definitely looked a lot sharper here than at Skate America and <laughs> I'm just like these guys and their almost costume violations in the rhythm dance kudos to Sasha's composure under pressure like she saved her her hairpin she saved the t- the tassel that almost fell out the the fact that she got the levels while dealing with that in like obviously like distress and still like sold it at her, after the rhythm dance, though, she looked, like, so mad. She was like, why me? Why again? But yeah, they looked, they looked in great shape, which was lovely. They had tough competition at both of their Grand Prix. Like, it was going to be a hard ask for them to beat Hubble and Donahue at home. And it was obviously going to be a hard ask for them to beat Papadakis and Cicerone. So I'm pretty sure that they were expecting to just perform solidly and, you know, qualify for Grand Prix final. And... Hopefully at Grand Prix Final, we will be able to see the rhythm dance without any mishaps or anything. This kind of reminds me how, like, we had to wait, like, last year, at, they had, like, the bird issue or the confetti issue at Finlandia, and we had to wait all the way till Helsinki to see the rhythm dance <laughs> performed to, like, its max potential. Um, but, yeah, it'll be, it, it'll be fun. They're worth the wait, so looking forward to it. Okay, and we also have our loves Wong Lu. <laughs> Yes. Who have done so well this Grand Prix in series. They've done so well this season, and they have two amazing programs. Oh, and the, well, they have three. Shame on NHK for not inviting them to the gala. Oh, my, <laughs> you're right. You are right. Yeah. Um, and, like, honestly, like, when I heard, first heard they were doing Chaplin and Black Swan. Yeah, like, those are, like, the most tired programs. I see them in singles too much. I'm not excited. But, oh my god, those are so good. Yeah, and I think that it's it's a testament to the fact that, especially for Chaplin, there's a lot of commitment that needs to be had to be able to pull off Chaplin, I think. And they really commit the entire time with the facial expressions. Like, they don't lose steam. And, like, I think losing steam is what would make this program suffer. But they really commit to it the entire time. I mean, they co- I mean, they even commit to the Black Swan. Like, soon you use his eyeshadow, man. Everyone should take note and follow like, okay, this is the sort of, this is the sort of makeup you should be doing, not, I mean, I appreciate also Adrian's commitment to the clown makeup. Yeah, but like, 
Oh my god. We appreciate men in eyeliner and eyeshadow. Yes. Moving on. So one interesting part of NHK especially was that we had, you know, we got to see McNamara and Carpenter for the first time after they had to withdraw from IDF because of injury. It was good to see them and to see their programs, but, you know, you could clearly tell that they had had issues with injury and you know that they were just trying to get out there and get some traction with their programs but it was it was rough to see because they had not the best showing especially given what they're capable of they finished last year which is like they're usually much more polished and usually so much cleaner but you know I can't even blame them because the lack of training time is especially since it's already so late into the season and everyone's been kind of drilling and improving since their last competitions like I, I can't even like really blame them for for looking so rough here I'm sure they just didn't want to pull like a chalk baits and have to do like the first time they showed their programs like right before nationals but yeah it was it was not the best outing we also had um Carrera and Ponorenko who unfortunately unlike a lot of the teams we saw from Skate America had a rougher outing than at Skate America. Yeah. Anthony missed the leg grab on the rotational lift, and it was just, like, kind of a disaster. I really love their free dance, so I'm really interested to see, like, how this is going to play out for U.S. Nationals with the second-tier, mid-tier teams, because obviously we have McNair Carpenter, who are still recovering from this injury. I don't know if they will be fully recovered for Nationals. CPOM, they're usually pretty polished, so this seemed like more of an unusual mistake for them. We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, I mean, Nationals is going to be interesting because, you know, Hawaii can make her have also struggled, and then, you know, Green and Parson are a new team, too. So it, it's going to be interesting to see kind of the battle for bronze, but... Well, and, and the potato medals, since we get potato medals at National. Looking forward to our qualifiers at the Grand Prix Final. We have Gabriela Papadakis and Guillaume Cesaro of France with 30 points. Victoria Snitsina and Nikita Katsilapov of Russia with 30 points. Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier of Canada with 28 points. Madison Hubble and Zachary Donahue of the U.S. with 28 points. Alexandra Stepanova and Yvonne Buchan of Russia with 26 points, and Madison Chalk and Evan Bates of the U.S. with 26 points. Anyways, I think that, you know, gold is pretty much a lock here, right? Papadakis and Cizeron would literally have to trip all over both their programs to not get gold. And then next, we have Sunit and Katsalabov, who are probably going to be still the their programs are definitely weaker this year and they've looked a little more vulnerable but still i think they have the benefit of clout and backing they have rust fed backing as of late which is a very powerful element <laughs> yes especially because julin is their coach uh, but we have seen them falter in the past like especially like nikita's twizzles like that second set, when they have the arms outstretched, you know what I'm talking about? And, like, I always think he's going to topple over because you can see his arms wobbling up and down. Whereas if you, like, look at Vika, she looks totally stable. Her arms do not shift in position or wobble up and down at all. I've, I've actually been really impressed by how Vika has improved. It's a shame that their programs in general are a little bit weaker this season. But, like, I still think technique-wise, they're probably second to Papadakis and Cicerone overall. Like, their rhythm dance score is so far the second best that we've seen, but I think that free dance will be a little bit more up in the air. I think some of the most interesting showdowns are going to be kind of between the two top Russian pairs and the two American pairs. It's going to be Papadakis, Cicerone, and then a Russian and a, an American team. <laughs> Much as I would love, like, Piper and Paul, oh, it would make me so happy, but like... Listen, like, if there is a probability if there could potentially happen yeah no this is honestly i'm kind of excited this year because for instance one hubble and donahue were at skate canada like they've had the most time to rework their programs out of anyone because most of these teams well chuck and bates had a little bit more but most of these teams have like either just competed at nhk or rest um but hubble and donahue had a while also zach was very ill 
um, during Skate Canada. Well, for both of them, he was pretty rough. Yeah, for both of them. So it was kind of understandable that he might, the performance might have suffered a bit, and hopefully they've reworked their programs as best they can. It's just going to be interesting to see. Um, Chuck Bates' scoring has been kind of surprising this season. Um, I think the U.S. Federation has probably decided to back them a little more than they were when they weren't quite as sure whether or not they were injured last season or not. But you know, in my in my dreams, Ivanova Bukin make the podium on third. But like, I don't know if I we'll, we'll see two Russian teams on the podium. Honestly, like I can't make any like real predictions of who's gonna get silver or bronze here. So anything can happen. No, you can't. It's so interesting because the free dance scores for the most part, like barring Papadakis with their own, have all been roughly around the 124 to 126 ish range. Um, and so, and and none of them had perfect levels, none of them. So, it's gonna be interesting. Basically, this is just me as usual, like you know, collapsing on the ground and begging everyone to please drill, like especially the rhythm dance and their patterns and work on their levels, because as much as levels still don't make quite the decisive factor as I would wish. One of these days, we will have that discussion again on whether or not lower leveled elements should be able to get plus fives and plus fours, but we'll save that for another time. So for the ladies podium at Rostelecom, we had Alexandra Trusova in gold, uh, Evgenia Medvedeva in silver, and Mariah Bell with the bronze. And at NHK, we had Aliona Kostornaya in gold, Rika Kahira in silver, and Alina Zakitova in the bronze. So I think that there were a lot of really redemptive skates by way of the second Grand Prix was much better than the first. Yeah, for in quite a lot of ways. Yeah. So we had Evgenia who just completely came out and absolutely threw down at Rastelicom. Like she hasn't skated two programs that well back to back in a very, very long time. Arguably maybe since the Olympics. I think it's it has been since the Olympics. She she really was like, listen, I, I am here. And she made some smart choices regarding her layout, too. Like, that helps so much. Getting rid of the LUTs in the short program for the loop was the best decision she has ever made. Her edge jumps are so much better than any of her toe jumps. So, like, <laughs> I'm so glad that that loop is in instead of the LUTs now. It's just so important that she was able to get this done at Bristolicom because especially after what had happened at Skate Canada, she needed this to prove to herself and her own, like, confidence that she can still remain, like, competitive in this field. Yeah, and that she made the right choice as well. Like, I think that, like, given how kind of uneven her performances have been since she started training uh, overseas I think that there's definitely a little bit of doubt or like you know self-doubt that naturally would seep in like is this the right choice and I think that she really needed like a performance like this to validate like yes I've made the right choice I'm going to keep continue with this um because what broke my heart most when I saw her at Skate Canada was like it almost looked like she was defeated. Like, I don't know why I did this. And it was just really, really great to to see that, you know, she was able to kind of wash those doubts away. Yeah, she did such a strong turnaround and it was fantastic. Also continuing in the vein of people who had really much, much better second Grand Prix and even just like better competitions, um, Mako Yamashita. We we were just so happy because we all we all saw her at Skate America. It was rough. It was hard because we had seen her last season at Skate Canada too, like live, and she was incredible there. And just seeing her struggle so much was really really hard at Skate America. So coming back and watching her just really throw down and skate really really cleanly and really really solidly like that's got to be amazing for her confidence because she hasn't had that good of a skate in over a year i think that she definitely needed that for her own confidence too especially because now nas is a month less than a month away now so like being able to put it together like now so close to nationals is really good for her. I'll also shout out to Yohana Yokoi. Firstly, she was at Rostelecom and NHK. So shout out to her doing this back to back. But also she didn't have that great of a short program at NHK and she turned it around in that free. 
and skated her life out and I'm just so proud of her. I have been ridiculously fond of her ever since she's been a junior for a couple of years. So like literally the moment I found out her hobby was gardening, like I there was no going back. Yeah, there's no going back. She spoke to you. Your daughter. <laughs> but yeah, I know it was really good to see her skate so solidly. Especially like normally like if you have kind of grueling back to back Grand Prix, you often perform a little worse at the second one as opposed to better. So seeing that improvement at home with the pressure like I'm just so happy for her and hopefully like this is you know a good mark of an upward trend another salient um narrative that emerged from these Grand Prix was a strong running thread of consistency Aliona, Rika and Alexandra Tresova all really held up well to a lot of pressure and meddled very highly either winning or getting silver at the Grand Prix. Aliona, are we going to talk about how amazing she is? Especially at NHK. Oh my god, that triple axel. Her world record short program, well I did kill over at the schools in general, but just like, oh she was so stellar. That triple axel with those transitions and with the distance that she gets on them, oh my god. And like, especially, it is just so wild to me how many triple axels we're seeing this season really good triple axles like not just like a we land this and get it done but like even like between aliona and rika both at the same competition landing such beautiful triple axles i was like oh man i still think young probably has my favorite triple axel that we've seen this season but young when she lands it is gorgeous and also liza's is looking so much more solid too so they're all just like absolutely playing it well i think that it's it's a matter of like for me those three uh aliona rika and young all have different things about their triple axel that i like so it's like i can't even pick a favorite because Aliona has the best transitions and the best distance. Rika rotates so fast and she gets the rotation so clearly in the air and her landings look so confident. Young has a little bit longer of a setup, but her landing has so much flow and speed out of it. It's just like the amount of quality that we're seeing in the triple axles is just like, like it feels like an abundance of riches, really. I know. And also like Liza's looks so much easier this season in general. And it just looks like she just hops into the air and gets into the rotation so quickly. It's 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 especially given sometimes kind of the dicey quality of some of the ladies' quads. It's hard. Even that the, the triple axles in general, like when people actually do them tend to be like, Oh, chef's kiss, like they're just gorgeous. Yeah, I think like the showdown was definitely between Aliona and Rika and like up to me, Aliona completely did win the short, like, no question. The free, I'm a little dubious about. Rika skated cleaner than Aliona, and the fact that her her technical element score was so much lower. It was a little bit, yeah, a little bit dubious. Like, I'm kind of okay with them getting about equal on the um, PCS. <laughs> yeah, like, they basically were equivalent there, which... I'm fine with. I have more issues with Alina scoring in that regard. But yeah, it was just kind of frustrating to see. Like she would have won either way, I think. And especially because Aliona also does have other tech issues as well that got overlooked. Yeah. Is the, the main issue because she has a very, very clear flux. So that's one of the more egregious problems I see. Well, it's especially glaring because I think that Rika is one of the few skaters that has such solid technique on every single jump. Yeah, it's it's a little frustrating and stuff. But at least they left qualified in the end. But the, basically, I'm a little frustrated on how much lower in some regards like Rika's GOE and stuff was in comparison to Aliona given how well Rika also skated. I'm really, really glad that she made the smart move to not go for the quad style. Um, I, because it, I don't think it would have been worth it. Like she was going to make the Grand Prix as long as she was top four and she just did her normal layout. And like, it's so close to the Grand Prix final that I would not want to risk that injury. I, I think she'll probably risk it at Grand Prix final though. Yeah. In general, the scoring was a, like, I think that the podium is exactly correct, but the scoring felt a little wonky. Especially when you look at, like, Alina scores as well. Alina also scored over 150. I think that's what upset me more, not with Aliona, but with Alina and, like, Rika's free skate scores being so close. It's so funny, though, because, like, those the, the three podium girls all got 150 in their free skate, and then the next one was, like, the 130. <laughs> and the thing with Alina is, like, 
I mean, she was very much quite business in just trying to get the jumps done for most of the free skate. But given, like, the shorts he had and how far back she was, like, I don't blame her. Like, she kind of just had to get her jumps done and make sure she skated cleanly. And, like, I appreciate the... People always write off Alina, and I appreciate the hell out of her grit and staying power because she managed to get through, like, a horrible season last year in terms of her injury. And she's looking more solid. She's looking healthier. The field has gotten so much more deep with, you know, Trusova and Kostanaya and Sherbakova all going seniors. So her results haven't been quite as good this season as last season. Like, she's getting more, you know, bronzes and silvers versus just winning things. But she's looking really good. I do think that her, the fact that she won PCS, she won PCS in both the short and the free. More glaring in the short, considering the mistake she made. At least with the free, she was clearly not as into the performance till she got the jumps done. But, you know, she skated very well. But for the short, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, if I look at it, I'm just like, okay. I was really happy, though, to see her come back and skate such a good free after that short program and just completely let down. Moving on, we have to talk about Satoko a bit. Go back. You can be sad for us all. Because she is like, oh. Okay, so I know I turn into like a classical like Greek widow, like beating my breast, rending my clothes, and screaming the moment her PCS come up. But like, I looked at her protocols for Rostelicum and Satoko is not... 3.5 3.5 points above Sasha and almost 4 points below Genya as a skater in components. Like, if, you know, Alina and Genya are like 9 to 9, 5 types of skaters, Sasako's should be like 12. So Tofa's a 12. So, yeah, it's just frustrating. Like, that. I don't think there's any other skater that I just go blank with rage the moment I see their PCS, but. Anyway, she had to do back-to-back GPs for the first time, so that was a struggle. And, like, changing her... Like, I'm glad she's made the change to Lee. I think in the long run it'll probably pay out. I'm a little side-eyeing their choice to drastically rework her jump tech that much in the middle of the Grand Prix series because it's costing her a lot and it probably would have either been better to move to him earlier and work on it or get through the season and then work on it well i feel like they probably were like we need to get her ready for nats at this point and wanted to like at least try it out because i feel like they were probably didn't have as much hope that she would make grand prix final given the fields unfortunately i don't know man so yeah it was really sad seeing her struggle so much like they were just unfortunate like she skated beautifully in a lot of aspects but there were just too many technical issues that held her back given the strength of the field and how well everyone skated okay so let's take a quick look to the grand prix final so qualified we have aliona kosternaya of russia with 30 points Alexandra Chusova, also of Russia, with 30 points. And Anna Sherbakova, also of Russia, with 30 points. Rika Kihira of Japan, with 26 points. Alina Zigitova of Russia, with 24 points. And Brady Tanel of the US, with 22 points. So, who was surprised at our top three qualifiers for ladies at Grand Prix Final? I mean, no one. Although, to be honest, I am, I am very glad that Anna Shibakova, like, did so well this season. Really, our surprise person is dear Brady Tanel, who managed to squeak in. Who was very much a, like, let's see how everyone else does before we can see if she qualified. Like, I think she definitely got kind of lucky in this regard, but, you know, kudos for her, honestly. Yeah, she's the the f- first U.S. lady since 2015 to make the Grand Prix final. Especially because she had back-to-back Grand Prix, too, in the beginning of the season. Yeah, which is super impressive. Also, she got, like, she had an incorrect call. I forget exactly what it was, but one of her jumps, I think, got called as a double instead of a triple on her um, in Skate America that didn't, like, she didn't manage to contest it in time. So the fact that she still won the tiebreaker um, and made it into the final, because like we were all really like we were really all sad if that was going to be the reason she didn't uh, make it into the final was because of some weird like you know the tech panel like messing up. So thank God like that didn't actually end up um, screwing her over. But 
Yeah, looking forward to the actual matchups, it's going to be a really intense final. Like, this is going to be probably the event of the final. We don't know what's going to happen. Literally anyone. Like, there, there's a lot more variance in who's going to win that title, I think. Aliona is leading the qualifiers over Sasha, which was my biggest surprise. Uh, but, like, also the quality of her components is really what's getting her there. So I, I'm really hoping that Aliona pulls out the win here. And then, like, you have all the games. Like, I mean, Sasha, they posted that she's training the triple axel and stuff. And if Sasha can, like, somehow stuff a triple axle or two into her like free skate and you know stuff a triple axle into a short program like I'm not optimistic that it's going to properly happen and Sasha out of almost anyone tends to be one of the most up and down in terms of she tends to flub her jumps a little more uh, luckily she has so many potentially high scoring jumps that it doesn't usually tend to impede her too much but that was when she wasn't necessarily facing off against this entire field so it, it'll be interesting and I mean one thing that I think actually probably concerns me the most about this final is Given the heavy Russian presence and stuff, and versus probably Rika, who is the strongest contender for, say, a silver or gold um, at the final, the Russian Fed was kind of unnervingly blatant in their politicking this Grand Prix season. Yeah, for both things. And it really came down to just really inconsistent narratives with um, lots of just, but they blatantly complained about Anna Shepikova's Quadlet Edge Calls in Cup of China uh, really openly and then also post NHK that they claim that the reason Rika didn't include um, a triple it's in her program was not because of injury um, because she's been pretty much injured and struggling to manage that all this Grand Prix series but because her edge was wrong. Of everyone in this field Rika's the only one with a clean Lutz. There are many Japanese skaters that have issues with flutzes. Right, but Rika is not one of them. I like. I don't know if this is just like a, a power move because Rika's right now the only clear threat to any of the Russian ladies, especially since she's the only Japanese lady that made Grand Prix final. But the sheer irony of it just kind of boggles my mind a little bit. It It's very, it's just disconcerting given the trends and ladies judging in general. And I hope... I hope at the final we can have kind of a little bit more of a clear-cut competition. You, you you have more hope than I do, Bex. Well, these are all, like, incredible skate. Like, we have such a good lineup at the final, and especially the people in contention, like Aliona and Sasha and Anna and Rico, and even Alina, who are in contention for gold and silver, like, they are capable, like, the things they are capable of technically and artistically are really impressive, so the fact that there's such blatant politicking going on in advance to shape the narrative and to pressure the coals is... We were lucky, I think, to have relatively strict panels at both IDF and Cup of China. So I hope that returns for Grand Prix Final, though I'm not terribly optimistic. But it was it was really refreshing to see fairly strict ladies calling. I'm interested to see if these comments will actually incentivize Rika to up her layout. Yeah, it, it'll be really interesting to see if she decides after all to include the quads. I would not be at all surprised because she seemed pretty like she ended up ditching at the last Mona NHK but she was drilling it in practice and I also trust that Rika would not be putting in a jump in her layout that she's not like 90% confident that she could land it yeah it might have just been a strategic move at NHK to to take it out for the reasons I stated before but uh, like I if she did put it in at Grand Prix Final, then I would not question her judgment there. Right. And I think probably the last key point that's going to be really interesting is just to see, given that sadly, yet we still only have three spots for Russian ladies at Worlds, seeing how all the four Russian ladies stack up against each other um, going into Russian Nationals, which will still have even fiercer competition with the people who couldn't make the final. It's going to be really interesting. It's basically like the pregame for Russian Nets. Oh boy. It's just interesting because, yeah, Rika and Aline are the only returning 
competitors to this Grand Prix final. Well, that's because the other three of them were at the Junior Grand Prix final last year. And they were all top qualifiers to their first Senior Grand Prix final. Alina was literally the mom taking cute photos of these people, like, at their victory ceremony, the last Grand Prix final. And now she's going to be, like, fighting, like, neck and neck with them. It's kind of wild. The shout of the week goes to Ryoga Morimoto, who is my new son. I love him. <laughs> Our Mozart dubstep remix king. Like, his performance quality of that, like, outsold, like, probably, like, 95% of the men's field, of the senior men's field, field, in my opinion. Like, it was incredible. I love and appreciate. Our future 2030 Olympic gold medalist, Rio Gumbre Mona. I know we're like doing a recap of competitions and trying to encourage you to watch that, but if you watch any program that, you know, if you need like your dose of serotonin for like the month, go watch that on loop like three times. You will not regret it. Literally opening up the whole gala with that too. And like JSF made such a smart move. Also just like shout out to JSF in general for always like including like their novice champions and like junior champions to these galas because it's such a great opportunity for these younger skaters to actually like perform to like such a large audience because this is like the one time where people are probably paying attention. Like the first time I saw like Rika and Shinsa was at a gala for World Team Trophy back in 2017 because they invited them, which I was like, this is brilliant because it w- it's so tangible what a fantastic experience that is for them. And like the fact that they invited Hitana and Shingo like and got them some exposure for Japanese ice dance, like, yes, please keep it up, invite them to everything. <laughs> this is the way it should be. <laughs> yes. Uh- so thank you for listening we hope to see you again for our next episode thanks so much to our transcribing and quality control team for keeping us in check and evie for our being our fabulous editor and gab for being our brilliant graphic designer if you want to get in touch with us then please feel free to contact us via our website in or on twitter you can find our episodes on youtube itunes google play stitcher and spotify yes please consider giving us feedback we absolutely adore and appreciate it and take it all into consideration so thank you if you would join the show and want to help support the team then please consider making a donation to us on our coffee page and we'd love to give a huge thank you to all the listeners who have contributed to our team thus far you can find the links to all our social media pages and our coffee on the website if you're listening on itunes please consider leaving a rating and review if you enjoyed the show it really really helps us thank you for listening this has been bex yogita and kat bye bye